I don't know about you, but I'm just dying to find out what our heroes get up to next. This month on D&D Minus. It's a long and arduous journey to the city of Cluth, and though boats and wagons are easy to come by early on in your trip, the further you travel, the more wary folks are to take you to your destination. By the final days of your journey, there is no one, no guide or caravan that will take you through the deepest jungles to where the city lies. So you make your way alone, hacking through vines, sleeping in shifts, wary of jungle creatures until at last the trees part and you see a very old and very overgrown road with a sign that points to a giant bubble. Inside the bubble, in the distance, you see a strange city made up entirely of pyramids. There are huge ones, hundreds of stories tall, and ones that appear to be small enough to be a single-family home, but closer to you, just inside the bubble's perimeter, sits a bored-looking halfling reading a newspaper whose headline you can see reads... Still nothing. As you approach, a couple of things happen. The first thing is the magic users among you can sense that this bubble, whatever it is, was created by dangerous and powerful magics well beyond your own powers and abilities. You guys all feel that dangerous and powerful magic, right? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I do You can not. sense it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Claude, just so you know, it's like dangerous and powerful. Claude, like, like, no is question. Stuff fast? I can't tell those fast. Are the little wee hairs on your arms just standing up straight? <laughs> My feathers? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's weird. He's a bird. I forgot he's a bird. I don't have any magic stuff. I just, I just had that realization again. I'm going to yeah. reach over and, and like tug on one. <laughs> okay. I pretend not to be in pain. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. I pull out a feather. If, <laughs> if anybody needs fletching, I suppose we could probably... <laughs> I don't know. Play a game of strep poker with him or something. (laughs) Well, as you're plucking claw, the halfling... (laughs) So we're not going to play strep poker then. We're just moving on. (laughs) The halfling notices you, excitedly puts down his newspaper, gets to his feet, and begins to speak. Welcome, brave adventurers, to the city of Cluth, the tomb of the undying nation. I am Stansky, named for Dungeon Master Patron Stansky. Thank you, Stansky. And I am the town gatekeeper and tour guide. Enter at your peril, for once inside, you will never leave. He then rushes over to a lever, which he pulls, and crude wooden puppets that he's obviously set up himself act out the story as he tells you. Long ago, Cloth was ruled by a wise and powerful king by the name of Aserak. Using his magically enhanced loot, along with his wisdom, cleverness, and kindness, Cloth thrived and became the center of culture and prosperity in the world. Then, tragedy struck. Aserak died and left his son his magical loot and rule over the kingdom. But the combination of power and grief warped him into a creature of terrible darkness. In his madness, the new king attempted to use his magic to bring his father back to life, binding his own life force to the old king and all his subjects. But his spell was a little too powerful and maybe just went wrong. And instead of bringing back the one he lost, he trapped our city in a perpetual state of undeath. And at this point, he excitedly walks over to a wooden booth that he set up, topped with a bucket of molten lava, which he upsets with a rope tied to the top. The lava pours down onto his head, and with a horrible scream, his flesh <laughs> boils away, his bones. Hey, uh, half leg, really quick. How did you get out of the bubble before you die? <laughs> nope, it's too late. He is dying with the ah, heat. Ah, damn and it. soon he is nothing but ash and goo. There is a pause, and then... With a pop, the melted remains disappear, and he's back. Ta-da! He sings. Hey, really quick, how did you get out of the bubble? Should have grabbed Before you kill yourself or whatever. Uh, I'm not outside the bubble. I'm inside the bubble. Are we all inside the bubble now? Nope. You're outside the bubble. I'm inside the bubble. You're just inside, and we're just outside? Correct. Can I touch the bubble? Does it pop? Uh, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. You know, I just want to say this. 
The lava still hurts. Just because it doesn't kill me doesn't mean it's a pleasant experience. A little round of applause would have been nice. It's fine. It's fine. We'll do it again. Now, now the moment's ruined. I got to go back to the volcano, get more lava. As you can see. Hey, it was pretty great with that uh, lava just now. I, too I, too I little, too late. If, too I had little, to, too late. if I had to grade it. No, it's fine. Go ahead. That's something <laughs> from my nightmares. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> As you can see, none who are inside the city can die or be harmed in any way. We can't be shot, we can't be stabbed, burned, electrocuted, magic, drowned, or otherwise destroyed. We're all frozen in the exact state we were in when the spell hit. We also, and at this, he gingerly wraps his knuckles on the bubble in front of him, can't leave. The bubble is a one-way door. We spent a few dozen years trying to bust our way out, dig our way out, teleport. <laughs> one of us tried to shrink ourselves down real small because it, it seems like air makes its way in and out, but... No dice. So let me go over some FAQs. First, how come we don't run out of food and water? Like I said, we're all frozen in the exact state we were in when the spell hit. I'm one of the lucky ones. I wasn't too hungry. I'd just taken a piss. And then he whispers to you, a cousin of mine was just about to go when the spell hit. Number one or number two? <laughs> Stood in his bathroom straining for six years before he resigned himself to his fate. Which was it? Question <laughs> one two. One or two. <laughs> Can we come inside? You're yes. just pretending you don't hear me. That's fine. You can. <laughs> he said straining. I think we can know what that means. I don't think we know what that means. <laughs> What's wrong? You're giving us so you? much information, but you can't give us this tiny... I key. put a lot he of effort into number one. It's fine. <laughs> just forget I said anything. Question two. Can we come inside? Yes, you can. But you won't be immortal. So you need to be careful. The city's gotten weird since we stopped being able to die. So you're going to need to take precautions. Also, like I said, the bubble is a one-way door. So just keep in mind that once you're in, you're in forever. Question three. Is there a way to break the spell? I have no idea. From what we can tell, the spell is generated from the top of Asarak's pyramid in the center of the city. However... When the spell was cast, the pyramid was transformed from the beautiful structure of culture and politics that it was to a deadly tomb filled with undead guardians and clever traps. People around here have tried to make their way inside for hundreds of years, and most haven't gotten much further than the front door. Even when you're immortal, there's only so many times you're willing to be bisected by a giant skeleton until you give up and find another hobby. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, should you choose to step inside, I'll be your guide, at least till you get into town. Uh, welcome to Cluth. Well, you should have a blast. And at the word blast, he pulls out a large bomb from behind his puppet stand, lights the fuse, and blows himself to pieces. There's a pause, and with a pop, he reappears. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. That was Look such a good performance. That. I gave him the maybe. That thing you did. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think we should all take a shit before we go. I think I was just going <laughs> to on our way in. Uh, yeah, take a pee now. That was so much information. I've got to hit the head. Okay. I know less than when I asked for what we did last episode. <laughs> <laughs> it has pushed all the information from the previous arcs out of the back of your head. I think we should all cast temporary spells that are useful on ourselves that like would just yeah. stick Ooh. forever. I don't. I don't know if that's how it works. So he hears you saying this, and he says. Again, just a reminder, the spell doesn't take effect on you guys. You will still be mortal. You can still take shits when you're in here. In fact, a lot of people will watch you take shits for quite a bit of money. Like I said, it's been a while since we've seen people take shits in town. So I'm, I just want to throw that out there. You are not immortal. You do not have a magical spell protecting you. Right. Only the people that were in there when it was created. Just us. Just who yeah, were in so here. I, sp I still feel like we should take a shit, you know, just in case. I don't, <laughs> I'm going to yeah, save it for making dominance. money. The guy's name is Asarak, so like I'm gonna go yeah. take a shit. I'm gonna <laughs> All right, roll for shit. <laughs> that's a that's a that's an eight. Is that a wisdom? Yeah. You take an okay shit. Charisma. It's one of those shits that you think's gonna be a great no, no, I was just D eight. I rolled a five of it. Oh, so, all right. So. Yeah, that's a pretty decent shit. It's it's not a Chipotle shit, but it's good. That's not a good What's good is to Chipotle you? Is Chipotle one you or know eight what? Never mind. I don't want to. So. <laughs> How'd you guys like the D&D &D adventure? Honestly, they mostly just stood there talking about Eli shits. That was, uh, so that was like every other that. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad all the universes have melted together <laughs> into being about my balance. All right. So what do you do? Hmm. All right. Well, we got to find the like shit porn place, right? Uh, it makes money. I, I mean, we have to go in, right? Okay, it sounded like the, you know, the thing we're looking for is very clearly in that giant pyramid. 
Uh, that being said, it'd be pretty funny if it wasn't. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just around the bubble. There's a guy just standing there twanging it. <laughs> Maybe we check the edges first just in case it, because somebody just, you know, piped in while I was talking about that. I, I don't know. This seems like a rather large bubble. I feel like that might waste a lot of time. But I mean, do we have like any kind of ticking clock at all ever in our lives? <laughs> I mean, the Queen of Chaos is rising to power in an undetermined amount of time. I, I just have a funny feeling it's not it's not going to end up being a problem. But I'm going to be a while, though. Yo, you'll probably have some time. <laughs> I doubt the Queen of Chaos is going to cancel the podcast. Like, I just have a funny <laughs> feeling she won't pop up until, you know, the right time. Queen of Chaos rules audio boom. <laughs> Queen of Chaos side tackles Dave. Fuck you. <laughs> I'll show up whenever I want. I'll do whatever I want. Queen of Chaos, bitch. <laughs> I'll show up episode one. You don't tell me how to live. <laughs> Mazorp. I guess we go in. Yeah. Okie dokie. Right. Well, the spell I chose, talk to corpse, isn't going to fucking work because there's no corpses here. <laughs> The moment you step through the barrier, you can tell something is deeply wrong about this place. The air smells stale. The plants, the very earth beneath your feet, have an unreal and frozen quality. It, it's a little like when you're walking through a dream and you have that moment where you realize you're dreaming, except it's the entire city. It's everything around you. And when you step through, Stansky says... All right. Wow. I, I got to tell you guys, it's been a while since we had some new folks around here. Uh, so first and most importantly, you're going to need these. And he hands you four neon yellow vests that have the word alive crudely sewn onto the front. Listen to me. Do not take those off. Like I said, people have gotten a little weird since there's no more death. And I know people would feel awful if they meant to give you a friendly beheading and they ended up killing you. Now, sorry, people do friendly beheadings here. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's kind of like the my wife of cloth. So, you know, you just you, you want to make sure cool. you're wearing your vest. Yeah, I love that time. joke. I thought you Borat. said you still feel the pain. Well, we do, but it's, it's you know, you get into it. It's like the circle game. Okay. Except white supremacists the didn't take it kind of feel like, a, you know, derivative <laughs> of Loki, like we're wearing the variant things. I don't know. Uh, go. Okay, I, I wrote, I wrote I this before like Loki premiered. <laughs> Loki can suck my ass. They invented, invented writing things on vests. <laughs> I, don't th I think it clashes with my mustache, but fine, I'll wear it. Check my Google versions. <laughs> now, most people here, they travel by cannon or catapult. It's not the most pleasant way to get from place to place, but you can't beat the speed. That said, it would probably kill all of you, so we're going to have to hoof it. If you want, I'll show you into town and give you the tour. Great. Okay. Yeah, tour us up. As you walk through the city, you can see what a wonder Cluth must have been. Just as when you first stepped into the bubble, though, something is off about everything you see. The pyramids are beautiful, but it's all so lifeless. What Stansky said about cannon and catapult travel is true. Everywhere you go, people are firing themselves into the distance or crunching sickeningly against the side of their destination, only to pop back into existence nearby. Stansky points out the various areas of town to you as he walks through the crowded streets, where you're eyed with great interest. All right, let's see. Uh, over there, we have the obsessors. Those are the painters, the writers, the actors, the artists. They can't get enough of living forever. All they do, all day, art, 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 art. Hey, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Stansky. So you said there's friendly beheadings, right? Yeah. Yeah, so could, like, could we... Are there Republicans here? Could we just do like a quick <laughs> stop and do a fun beheading? I don't know. I don't know. I just kind of want to do one. What about me saying that this was a great city makes you think there were Republicans here? <laughs> well, I don't know. You said it was all like stale and shitty and like doesn't change at all. Because no, no. What, once you're not afraid of death, you don't have to be a Republican. Uh, all right. So you're saying there's no... Fine. Yeah, sorry. Just continue your tour. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Anyway, so those are the artists. They're, they're, they're over there. Oh, oh, down that road, you'll find Traction Park. That's for the weirdos who just can't get over how immortal they are. I mean, sure, they say they're seeking the sweet release of death or whatever, but don't let them fool you. They just like jumping into pits full of spikes. That said, it is a great place to blow off steam. <laughs> for my uncle's birthday, I gotta tell you this, we all ran over him with a steamroller. I mean, it's fun. It's good for kids. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good time. Good for kids. And speaking of blowing off steam, down that way is the fuckhole. A nonstop <laughs> orgy of your deepest desires and perversions. But look at me. 
Keep your vest on. That place has had more than 100 years to get really, really weird. Oh, I'm curious. Did anybody get frozen right before an orgasm? You'd have to go down there to find out because <laughs> I, I say that is... Uh, that that's, is like, apparently... yeah, that's like losing a sneeze for the rest of your life. Like, that's big. That's <laughs> yeah. rough. Yeah. Go down there. Someone will tell you about it. All right. Uh, he then points at an there, impressive right? <laughs> militaristic looking pyramid and says, that is the fool's guilt. Remember why I said that people have been trying to fight their way into the center of the castle for hundreds of years? Well, that's where they all hang out when they're not being crushed by traps, <laughs> torn apart by skeleton wolves. It's filled with all kinds of folks, former heroes, the desperate, and of course, the just plain cuckoo who are still trying to get out of this thing. And here, he says, stopping in front of a cozy looking pyramid, is your new home. Well, at least will you live for the rest of your life. We call it the Last Stop Inn, our premier and only accommodations for living visitors to our town. The good news is it's totally free, and the innkeeper, Pam, named for patron Pamela Lee, thank you, Pamela, is a fantastic cook. The bad news is you're trapped in the city forever until you die, at which point your bones will be reanimated and you'll join the undead guardians of the tomb forever. Aren't we trapped anyways? Yeah, but I, you know, I just wanted to remind you that's the, <laughs> that's the bad news. I mean... Okay, so, so if we die in our current form, then we get reanimated and then we're like everybody else in the city? No, if you die, you're reanimated and you join the undead guardians of the tomb forever. We're not dead. Oh, and they only are in the tomb guarding the stuff. Yeah, they're sort of like lifeless ah. skeleton slaves to the prince's will. Hmm. All right, so could we go to the inn for like a night to just chill? Yeah, absolutely. Head on in. Sex thing, and then we do the sex thing. Yes, absolutely. Cool. I just want to be. Okay. I just want to be rested up before we go to the sex thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go into the inn. It has been a tough day. You're right. Yeah, I just want like you know uh, sleep, right. uh, power bar. I want to know what alcohol Gatorade. tastes like by people who haven't had to like fear their own death. I'm excited. That's actually a really cool angle, Bridget. I like <laughs> how you think. Pretty sure it's just the scotch you and Heath like, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> you step inside the last stop in and you notice it's the coziest place you've ever been. Cloth swelters under a blazing sun, but in here, it is the natural cool of underground stone. Each table is surrounded by comfy chairs of all shapes and sizes. Patrons are all around the bar laughing, talking, playing music and games. But all of that comes to a screeching halt when you walk inside. Every eye in the inn turns towards you, takes in your vests, and in unison, everyone screams, Welcome! You are heaved onto the shoulders of patrons and carried around the bar, where everyone wants to shake your hand or embrace you. Finally, you're deposited in front of the shining oak bar, where an attractive, dark-skinned half-elf you assume to be Pam is grinning at you. She says, You'll have to forgive everyone for getting excited. We've been waiting for a new customer for a long time. It's checking in. And at that, she pulls a thick visitor's book from the bar and says, let me see. Oh, I'm afraid we're all out of rooms. And then she smiles and the entire room breaks into raucous laughter. And she says, sorry, that's just a joke I've been planning for a few decades. <laughs> it's classic. You do have rooms, though, right? Because we have rooms. Yeah, so no, okay. I gave her the meh hand sign again. Yep. Really hurtful, enjoyed the hurtful. like big norm entrance thing we got. I, you apologized, but that was awesome. We planned that too. Planned that. Planned the joke. Cool. So our yep. rooms then. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Right upstairs, you're the first four rooms or the last four rooms. I really can't emphasize enough. You are the only living people in this city. <laughs> <laughs> so do they sleep? Do they not sleep at all? Either? Nope. We don't sleep. We don't eat. They don't shit. Don't shit. Yeah. You guys, do you all have plumbing then? I don't understand why you would have plumbing. I don't. You I do. feel like we should have shit more before we came in. I'm trying to yeah. say. You said she was a good cook. How would anybody even know? Oh, I just cook for fun. I mean, we could still taste. So you don't have to eat, but you sometimes do for the taste. Yeah, you know. But you don't shit? Why this are you seems so, so confused awful. with this concept, Dave? It's just like a really, just scientifically, it seems like there's a lot of inconsistencies <laughs> that like haven't been fully thought out. Oh, yeah, you feel it. <laughs> You feel like this hasn't been fully thought out and planned? <laughs> no, it doesn't seem like okay. that. Okay, well. Maybe if there had been some kind of fact. <laughs> <laughs> Your real name is <laughs> 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 
It's not me doing the beeping. I don't care. Do my own beeping. <laughs> Nobody punishing but myself. <laughs> so yeah, you can you can head up to your room. Your rooms are upstairs. She shows you a very cozy accommodations, and she says if you have any questions, you can ask. Okay. Uh, can I have some of your finest? Oh gosh, what what do you drink here? Well, let's see. We've got ever grape mead and uh, Bulgarian. Nope, that's a real place. We've got <laughs> Molmanarian wines. Nailed Thank it. you. And Logitech. Camera. I feel like if I tell Eli that Molmanaria <laughs> is real, he'll have to do it again. All right, yeah. I'm just I'm just gonna get some of their uh, uh, something something. Molmanarian wine. Something. I'll yep. have some uh, Molmadarian wine. I, uh, round of Molmadarian wines on the house. And some Evergrape, whatever that was. Yep, Evergrapes. She, she hits you up. Mead. I'm paying Grape attention. I might not say a lot, but I'm paying I'm <laughs> soaking it in. All right. And what about, uh, can we eat some stuff? You said you have, you're have. you like the best cook ever. People taste it sometimes. What's, yes. what's your best thing? People well, who don't shit taste it. I don't know. <laughs> this <laughs> is my favorite. And she pulls out a hot tomato bisque. Four bowls of it. Nice. Yeah, I definitely want that. Yeah, it's delicious. Do you, can can I get a grilled Baller. cheese next to it? Uh, <laughs> Let's ch- real I quick. Think, I think we're supposed to. to God cheese. wants us to go look at the rooms right now, so I'm gonna go up and look. You, at the rooms. you can do whatever you want. You can oh. go up to the rooms. You can go to any of the places. Stands. Uh, the, the city. Sorry, I got. I so. Uh, I feel like that's tomorrow morning. Uh, it can also be tomorrow morning. That's a good. Uh, that's a good I, point. W- wait, wait, wait. Uh, so tell me about this. Um, the sex pit. The pyramid. <laughs> the 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 what is it in the center of town? The citadel. Really, the one yeah, thing you want to know too. about is the deadliest. All right, that's fine. <laughs> I want to know about the orgy. Y'all want to know about <laughs> dying. Pin in the sex pit. The tomb. Oh, yes. I wanted to I'd... put a pin in the sex pit. You all would get <laughs> pinned in the sex pit. Two boats, at least. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I've I've been there, uh, just like everyone else. Uh, my idea to get in was I was going to bring the prince, I mean, the king, a big pot of soup to cheer him up, if you can believe it. But I got killed by the guard on the bridge, just like everyone else. My goodness, it hurt. Never went back. If you want to know more about the tomb, and especially about the inside of it, you'll want to hit up the Fool's Guild. Some of them claim to have gotten pretty far in, but they're probably lying. Okay, I think that might be where we're headed next. Unless we can take a detour by the sex pits if you... Y'all Thank you, wanted. Bridget. Yes, so that... Or we can that, split up. <laughs> we, uh, so you're not going to go to the sex pit, is what you're saying? I'm saying that I don't... I don't... I would go with them. All right, what if, what what if Bridget there? goes to the I guild and talks to the nerds and we all go to the sex pit and then we meet back up? <laughs> I just want to hear Eli come up with the sex bit on the fly. That's right. <laughs> on the fly? Are you oh, kidding me? Yeah. You don't you think, think he has I a speech the fuck hole and oh, wasn't? Morgan. And I was like, nah, they probably won't want to go to the fuck hole. <laughs> Morgan, let me let me Eli really flesh never... out this adventure. <laughs> Eli uh. never like does private mode on his search, his computer, <laughs> his search engines, or his internet. That's right. You put anything into Google, and you'll see exactly what he's been watching. So you you go into the fuck hole? Yeah, we're going to the fuck yep. hole. I... everybody just popping in real quick to thank you once again for listening to the podcast i have been planning this particular part of it since we started so i hope you enjoy what we've got coming up it's wacky it's fun there's a lot of craziness coming if you're enjoying the show why not head over to itunes and give us a five-star review Uh, that actually helps new people find out about the show puts us up in the rankings does all sorts of good stuff for us and it's free doesn't cost you any money. You just go on, press the little button, type some nice words, boom, do a nice thing for us. But hey, if you want to do the not free version of helping us out, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash DND minus for as little as a dollar a show, you get a commercial free version of the podcast, as well as behind the scenes Dungeon Masters corners where I talk about how I made the show and the choices I make behind the scenes and my own history with Dungeons and Dragons. We also have a short game up there called The Worst and the Dimmest, which you can listen to. That's an awful lot of fun. And it helps us eat. 
the food. So again, there's all the benefits again at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. All right. I think that's it. We'll see you next month. Back to the show. The fuck hole, as will surprise no one, stands alone in its own part of town. The only not pyramid-shaped building for miles. It is a bright pink dome with an entrance of suggestive purple curtains. I was thinking it was going to be dick shaped. Yeah, see? See? You step inside to a bright purple and red entry room, at the center of which is a golden desk. And on top of it, not behind it, but actually on top of it, sits a stunning high elf with golden hair wearing a barely noticeable bikini. She barely looks up at you and says, Hi, welcome to the fuck hole where all your dreams come true. Prepare to dive into an ocean of pleasure from which a sailor never wants to return. I'm your captain, the sex trantress B Whistle, not named for a patron because that would make me uncomfortable. Are you ready to set sail for Pleasure Harbor, <laughs> Destination Ecstasy? Didn't hear any of that, but yes. <laughs> so... Are you unionized or what? <laughs> it seems like you're not. I was I mean, also worried about the pay. And yeah, what, what's the <laughs> economic situation here? That's my first question. I was about to say, well. it doesn't seem like she's having fun. What? No, what are you talking about? I work at the center of an orgy of worldly pleasures and I can never die of old age. So who wouldn't love that? Did I say the thing about I'm a sex trantress yet? Yeah. What, what is that? Spell that? S E X C H A N T R E S. Oh, like enchantress, but sex. Got sex transgress. Yeah, I made that up. Can you do a sex spell right now, just like as a you know show off a little bit? Yeah, the I totally could. I would love that. I would love that. I'm super psyched to do that. Give me a second. I... Great. And then Give she just sort of stares into the middle <laughs> distance for a while, saying nothing. What? Like Give her a couple more seconds. <laughs> I, I will tip really well. I'll I, tip right now. <laughs> Still staring. Okay. Oh, uh, Dave, pay for your fucking porn. I, I am. That's a tip. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shit for you right now for money. <laughs> <laughs> she looks very bored at that. Really? Yeah. Are you kidding? I, I heard you've never seen somebody shit that. in so long, really right? Don't, like I probably really your whole life. Have. No, I've seen a bunch of people shit by now. No. It's just, you gotta remember, I've been here since the beginning, so. Fair enough. Seen lots of living people come in and shit in all sorts of places and all sorts of ways. What about a dragon? <laughs> yeah, probably a dragon too. I think I have a cloaca. I don't know if that biologically makes sense, but maybe. Yeah, I looked it up. Technically, you have a cloaca. It's like an in and out. It's both. Yep. Weird. Cool. Right? Where did she look it up? <laughs> I feel she like we're really striking it up right now. <laughs> All right. I, I am going you do. to... do. <laughs> I, I would like to mosey on. It seems like this is not something that's quite my cup of tea. I'll tell you what. After watching Dave flirt, <laughs> I feel like I want to go hang out with dead people, too. I'll go with you <laughs> to the dead people. I have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> No way. Seriously? Yeah, podcast. It's actually, I have a few. It's like a whole company. You, want. <laughs> you sounded excited about that. No, I'm just you kidding. I'm to... fucking okay. I don't care. And then she <laughs> stares into a slightly different direction I... for a little while. <laughs> may, may I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What way can I lead you into a world of pleasure? Why, why would you do... It seems like you're bored. So why would you do this? If you don't have to... If, I mean, I assume money is not... an not like a thing you need in this fine economy. fine so the fuck hole was started by the folks in cloth who were let's just say busy when the spell hit some were busy by themselves some were busy together oh but... like i was asking about before remember yeah. guys when i asked about sorry go ahead you, you yeah. weren't there but if you've ever been walked in while trying to get your business done you know how let's just say frustrating that can be well, now imagine being in that state for more than a hundred years. Rough. So, yeah. You know how like all the murdery and die people are together at Traction Park and all the artists are at the Obsessors? Well, we got together at the fuck hole, all of the people who were busy, and we've been doing our best to finish ever since without any luck. We oh. really are all stuck in exactly the state we were in when the spell came down. Oh my God. You too. Like, you can't sneeze for this whole time. You too? <laughs> yeah. 
Me too. I said that earlier. You weren't here. Again, it was it was a conversation from earlier. I said I said I, I wondered if there were people like this and they it's like they can't sneeze. It wow, that's I, rough. Yeah. What do you want us to ask for? You what seem do you, unexcited about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What are you guys doing here? I mean, it's, that's I, a great where, question, where, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a fuck Maybe pit. I think you have us. some idea. <laughs> Something about a harp. Oh, you mean more generally than the fuck pit? Sorry. Yeah. Honestly, I wanted to go to the fool's corner or wherever it is and uh, ask them, pick their brains about what they've done to get in. Yeah, I didn't want to do it until I realized that it really would just be flirting with Eli, which would be weird. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No, I really wanted us to all experience this because there's no better way to learn this lesson than when you realize I am actually (laughs) all the characters. Keith still seems into it, though. You want to fuck me as an NPC? I, I am. Yes. Because this is the shit that Critical Role won't do. Are this you is, asking? Is, I'm the girl with the nose ring of podcast. Love it. D Real Play Podcast. <laughs> so yes, or... <laughs> I think we're going to go to the Fool's Guild. I think we're going to go to the Fool's We're, we're, li- yeah. we're t- going in the door of this fuck pit and then leaving. That's what you guys want to do. I... Dave... Dave stays at the fuck you. to to flirt with the bored person who's obviously not interested in him. I guarantee. Well, no, I mean, uh, maybe I'll find one. somebody who's interested. I'm not saying it, I don't want to like harass this person. For I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just you want to strike out with every immortal in the place. Do, are people not fucking in this p- fuck pit? What's I don't no. quite understand. They can't come. Uh, but they, you're they could, the only one who's mm. going to be able to come. Mm. I'm just trying like to decide sex. if I care about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Yes, I thought about it. I care. I will fucking go with you guys to the nerd guild or whatever. See, and that's how people know it's just Dungeons and Dragons. All right. You step into the Fool's <laughs> Guild and are immediately impressed by what you see. Weapons of every shape and kind line the walls or are filled in barrels all around the room. Each part of the room seems to be dedicated to a specific task. There's a. I'm sorry. Did you say every shape? I feel like some of those are just impractical. <laughs> yeah, no. The the octagonal <laughs> swords are a real bitch. Those okay. ones are in a dusty All barrel. Right, just, back. Sorry. <laughs> There's also infinity swords right now. <laughs> yeah, they suck. Yeah, the figure eight ones. You just can't even lift them. It's a real bitch. There's a corner table filled with maps of what you assume is the tomb at the center of the city, where clever looking rogues pour over every detail online. There's a blacksmithing section where armorers hammer steel into fine, strong armor, and in the center is a giant sand-covered practice floor where magic users and warriors of all kinds spar at their full strength, stabbing each other, blowing each other up in all manner of grisly ways, only to pop back into existence and begin again. But when you enter the room, everything grinds to a halt and not in the welcoming way it did at the inn. Norm. No? Oh, not not here. All right. (laughs) You can hear a pin drop as everyone in the room stares at you and your vests. Until at last, a silver-helmeted gentleman in the dress of a conquistador breaks the silence and walks over to you. Greetings, travelers. How may I help you? (laughs) Well, I, I think you might be able to guess. I hear there are people here who actually got into the... What's it? A tomb? Tomb. End of the tomb. <laughs> you can tell we've done our research. We're, uh... mm-hmm. And we wanted to hear the stories and the tales and how you maybe did it. Oh, you want to hear how far we have made it into the tomb? Well, let me introduce you to our group of warriors. This, he says, placing his hand across the brawny shoulders of a huge barbarian wielding a double-sided axe, is Satanic Nightjar. Named for patron Satanic Nightjar. Thank you, Satanic. In life, he was a gladiator in the infamous blood den. He could have killed all of you with his bare hands at the same time. Tell them, Satanic, how far have you made it into the tomb? And Satanic glares at the ceiling for a moment and says, Well, um, technically not past the front gate. From there, the conquistador moves on to a beautiful raven-skinned woman in the finest flowing robes you've ever seen. And he says, This is the witch Xenia Flowers, based on patron Xenia. Thank you, Xenia. Her magic skill used to bring people from all over the world to study at her feet. She's forgotten more about magic than you'll ever learn. Tell them, Xenia, 
How far have you gotten? And Xenia looks ashamed for a moment and says... Probably just to like the front door and not really. Not, yeah, not past the yeah, front door. Okay. I'm not sure how complimentary this is to the patrons, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> and I am the founder of this... Fool's Guild, as Did they you also us. not get past the front door when you tried yes, to... Yes, yeah. okay. Carnifex del Torre. Name for patron Carnifex. Thank you, Carnifex. Master of the Royal Guard and the military right hand to the king. I have been trying to break into the tomb and free this city for over a hundred years. What I have seen is hundreds, if not thousands, of adventurers, just like yourself, march into that tomb, never to return. Each fool that dies in this city adds his corpse to the tomb's protectors, which makes my job all the more difficult. I beg you, enjoy the city. Sample, perhaps, some of Pam's excellent cooking. We had that tomato bisque. It was really it's good. great, right? right? It's How good is that? It's good, good, actually. Did you have a uh, grilled cheese? I asked cold? for a grilled cheese, and it, I thought it was about to happen, but it never happened. I, but the bisque That's was bullshit. good. It, that was bullshit. bullshit. I kind of made a big deal, some... but then somebody just moved on. I forget what happened. <laughs> but don't go to the tomb. Don't go. All right, okay. but did any of these previous adventurers have plot armor? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone mumbles plot armor. <laughs> I just... The fourth wall falls down. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Pyramid just shatters on the ground. Oh no! Let me lift that back up and put it into place. If I might ask, what is it that keeps getting you in the end? Well, I feel like it's the undead monster. Yes, most of us are killed by the gate at the front. He usually does a good enough job. He's a giant skeleton. Oh, it's a sentient with... gate? No, it's a giant skeleton at, at the, the front gate. Got it. Get yep. the, the gatekeeper guy is a skeleton. Nobody okay. you know has ever passed the gate. Uh, a few magic users have teleported slightly past him and then instantly died. So how, that's not really making it that? past him. Magic? No. Or yeah, magic. Said, yeah, they, they blinked or they... They jumped or they teleported oh, no, I, or something. I'm saying instantly died by magic or by his hand. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Uh, you know, it happens really quick. <laughs> and most of us don't make it. Let me get someone. Let me get someone. Edgy. Edgy, come here. And a rogue approaches from the corner who was studying the maps. And he says, hey, I'm Edgy Rogue. <laughs> My parents were killed. Not and he says, patron. Edgy, your that parents were not name. killed. We <laughs> know your parents rogue. weren't killed. Don't make that up. That was a weird That's lie. weird. They're here and just, just be normal. I will always listen to a, a sappy backstory, Edgy. It's okay. Thank you. And Edgy explains that he actually crawled underneath the bridge. I don't know why I'm not just doing his voice. Does he have a voice? And yeah, and Edgy <laughs> says to you, Once I crawled underneath the bridge, managed to sneak past the skeleton. But when I got inside, I died. And I woke up back on the bridge again. How did you die? I don't know. I just died. Did you get killed by Bane, perhaps? And then I stole his voice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear about my parents dying? And then an older couple in the back is like, Edgy, stop saying we're dead. It's weird. <laughs> You're putting people off. All right, so All question. Right. If we were to try to go into this place, what's the move? Do you have any advice on that? Oh, uh, pretty please with sugar on top. Do not add your bodies to the undead guards. Inside the tomb. Okay, you're rejecting my... my hypothetical. Like, if we were going to do it. I, no one here will help you. We have helped literally thousands of people. They all die. They make it harder to get inside. So we have all sworn. Right. So it's probably not even good for us to ask for your help because you suck at it. Clearly yeah. suck at help. Okay, we don't suck. First of all. You do, we, they all got killed. You didn't everyone is, is Everyone is batting a zero. So <laughs> we're all equally good all right. and or bad. Um, I'm... I'm Y'all had more cast, at past. Uh, turn undead because they're cool. undead. Technically, they're right? not undead. They're not undead. Wait. No. Oh shit! Never mind. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not undead. Damn. What are they? They're alive. Oh yeah, I guess that. Which that's seems okay. like that's what it would mean when you say undead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bridget, as you're considering casting that spell, a voice pipes up from the back of the room and says, "I'll help you." And the room turns to a boy, no more than 17 or 18, dressed in finery. And he says, I'm Quigley. Um, and I, I guess I just disagree with everyone else here. I think everyone deserves a chance. And I, I'm not strong or fast. And I don't know any magic. And I can't really fight. But 
I lived in the palace, and I know my way around. Well, at least I used to. Uh, if you want my help, you can have it. You used to know your way around? Did the map change of the city? Yeah, the, the tomb transformed into like a, a giant evil place filled with traps and Did undead. It move? When? Yeah, the inside. Uh, when, the pr- when the bubble happened? When the king... Oh, you used to know your way around the inside of that building, and now you don't, is what you're saying. Well, I mean, it's probably similar inside. You'd imagine. Yeah. I I guess. I have a funny feeling it's going to be similar, and you're going to be useful. Do you want to come help us? At very least, he could soak up some hits. Hi. You're welcome. (laughs) He's just kidding. He's just kidding. Yeah. No, it's okay. I'll soak up some hits. I'm immortal just like everyone else. And to prove it, he pulls a crossbow out from someone's holster and shoots himself in the face. Oh, I would have trusted you, wow. man. He just uh. shot himself right in the face with that crossbow. That's hard to do just like geometrically. <laughs> Before he can revive, I grab a little bit of the ash or whatever from him. The ash <laughs> vanishes from your hand. No! He pops, he pops back into existence and he says, see? Immortal. So <laughs> at least you don't have to worry about me on the trip, right? Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. soak up hit points. Totally. I, right. Wait, how... So if, if you... Nobody got inside the gates. Does the skeleton just pick your your ashes up and throw you back? I No. So whenever you die, at least if you were here when the curse happens, inside the tomb, or as the case may be on the bridge that leads to the tomb, you pop back into existence just outside the gate. Oh, oh at spawn point. All right. Yeah. So you were on the bridge on the way yeah. in. It's like Halo. It's like a save point. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I feel like we can do it despite the fact that we have no reason to believe that within the story world. (laughs) (laughs) All of your information is very convenient, though. I got to say, like, right at the right time. It's very convenient. You, since you knew the place before, is there any other way in? Oh, yeah, there's a back entrance. We've just all been not going in the back entrance. Uh, there's a fucking business. back no, entrance. A, I'm saying no, that to the no, first guy. There's not. That's sarcastic. I, I like this kid. I, like I got. I, I have an interesting uh, question for you. Is the uh, giant skeleton on the bridge? Is he undead? Yes. Yes, he is. See okay. now, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Is there also magic that's protecting the the gate as well, or is it just him? Nope. Just him at the front gate. I feel like we can handle this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then everyone in the room is like, "Yeah, sure, you can handle this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can't wait." Well, now we got to do it just because they're a bunch of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> this will probably be our last chance for the sex pit, though. I imagine it will disappear. <laughs> I'm just curious. Outside, Maybe you told us already. How many years ago was the transformation of the city? The only thing people have told you so far is hundreds or more than a hundred. Yeah, I was going to say, all they've said is over a hundred. Okay, so this kid has been like 17 or 18 for hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, that's what you can assume. Yeah, and was the castle was transformation that. at that moment? You said that he he said the castle or the tomb or whatever has changed, right? He used to know his way around, but he might not anymore. Yeah, is that the moment that the bubble went up and the thing happened? It changed. Yeah, okay. yeah. I feel okay. There's something about how Eli said you can assume that just now. That's a clue because he could have just said yes. Yeah, but like, oh, Eli used more words than was necessary. Therefore, it's a clue. I mean, <laughs> on the D and D minus bingo card, is everyone assumes it's not a plot point, and Eli just sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> just a series of my abandoned characters and clues <laughs> next to my <laughs> shitty spelling. Oh. Should have learned how to use a comma. Okay, <laughs> let's go kick some undead butt. All right. Undead tail bones. There you go. <laughs> the palace <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> is not Coxix. difficult to find. <laughs> of the many resplendent pyramids in the city, the palace is the largest by far. In fact, you're not even sure if it is a pyramid because it's so large and so tall, it disappears into the clouds before you can see the top. It's surrounded by a moat teeming with the skeletons of crocodiles And the only way across is a narrow bridge guarded by a giant skeleton. Question. Yeah. How wide is the moat? Um, 150 feet. That sounds, you made that up just now to be way bigger. (laughs) I sure did. (laughs) Definitely 
Yeah. It's not the size of a normal moat. Whatever. Fine. Okay. It's moat. Oh, I'm sorry. That's you a, a fucking moat, moat expert. You see, you think you think moats are 150 feet that's, wide a lot of time? I mean, come on. For him to be guessing, knowing what Eli knows about feet, like that's way 50 closer. Half of a football field, the width uh, of a moat. Way closer than I thought he was going to get. I mean, it's not going to be possible. You're right. It's impossible. Yeah. Does anybody <laughs> have any animate undead magic or no? Just. Uh, I I do I have, I have a talk to un- un- talk to dead anime. If somebody is can, actually I used a corpse to have some spells not- that helped with the undead and then Eli was like change up your spells go <laughs> fucking go crazy do whatever you want. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I don't we have can take now. some of these skeletons from the moat with us even if we get past the first guy. Why would we want to take them with us to tr- spring traps and stuff? Oh all right all right throw a throw a couple crocodiles out in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean we have like physical objects also. No right? you said that the moat was filled with like skeletons of dead people right? No, they're literally like skeleton crocodiles, crocodiles that are okay, like I didn't hear that. undead, I thought it was, yeah. Yeah. I thought undead it was, crocodiles. I thought it was dead adventurers. Okay, I gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. As you approach the bridge to get a better look, something strange happens. The skeleton on the bridge cups his bony hand to his jaw and shouts, Hello there, Quigley. Who are your friends? I thought for a moment you weren't coming today. And as you get to the bridge, it strikes you just how giant this skeleton is. It towers over you. And it says, Forgive my rudeness. I'm Reese. Named for patron Reese Everett. Thank you, Reese. And I'm the guardian of the gate. I hope it's not rude of me to point this out, but I've noticed you're alive. And as much as I appreciate the new recruits, you might want to wait a decade or two before trying to fight your way in. Have you tried Pam's cooking? It is truly. Excellent. Have you the heard tomato that bisque? bisque. The tomato bisque yes, is what I was so just good. mentioning. Oh man, everybody it's agrees on that. You should go have some rather than dying was, here with me. It was medium. Huh. <laughs> you can die. The little one who insulted the best. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with you coming. <laughs> that kind of negativity. All right, Eli, I think we're going to wait a couple of decades. <laughs> All right. <laughs> A D&D Minus was good. Mid-season, they did that thing where they just lived their lives in sort of peace and quiet. A <laughs> lot of sex pit episodes. A <laughs> lot of sex pit episodes. <laughs> I was really rooting for Dave and <laughs> the and girl all, Eli yeah. refused to name after a patron. <laughs> but Eli was steadfast. <laughs> all right, so we got like okay. uh, 10, 20 years. Let's go back to the fuck pit. All right. yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so we could just oh. do a time cut to 10, 20 years later. <laughs> 20 I, years later, <laughs> everyone roll for, like, disadvantage on your physical bodies. Oh, God. Oh, well, no, I just the humans. Uh, none of you are human. All right. So, yeah, you're fine. All right. There you go. Yeah, it was a quick, quick afternoon for us. We're all yeah. refreshed. 20 years of fucking. Okay. Now we're yeah. on the long, game. Long, long rest. How long is the, the bridge? Probably 150 feet. 149 <laughs> feet. It goes by uh, fast. Yeah, 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 makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. Excellent. And is it just teeming with undead or just the skeleton? Nope, just the skeleton. Hey. You have a spell that'll run him off, right? I I do. I do. It seems like it's a spell that was built for like the undead masses, if that makes sense. Mm. But I could I guess I could try it on one. Maybe we, oh, should we just talk to How him really we, quick? We could also just go across the, the moat. If you can get rid of masses, then maybe the crocodiles we could. I run would be them no with. help this adventure. I literally have a quarter staff. Like, I'm going to be. <laughs> just you have back. stun. Yeah. True. Use your fucking shower thoughts. You had, one, <laughs> you had one that was just like a stunner. Something about fire being on you. Can't you just be boring and we can walk by him? That's a, not a bad idea. But I think that there's people who got past. And didn't know how they died, right? Well, something happened after the skeleton. Oh, I yeah, right, right. All right. Yeah, there's some well, magic. are we rolling initiative or what? Do you want to just like run in and start fighting the skeleton? I think we should not. <laughs> uh, I, I, not yet. How does this normally go with you and the lad here? Oh, Quigley, shall we show them? And Quigley says, absolutely. Get ready, Reese. I've learned some new stuff. And he says, I'm sure you have, lad. And Quigley runs like full tilt. He pulls a small, it's a dagger, but he's holding it like a sword. He obviously isn't very well trained. Reese pulls a giant scimitar from his back and cuts Quigley in half, who reappears next to you and goes, yeah, it usually goes like that. Uh, Oh, you know, I'm going to say, hey, do it again. And I'm going to hold an action for while he's mid swing. Sure. (laughs) Mid swing down on, on Quigley. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on dead. Turn on dead. Yep. Bridget. Yeah. Your lightning arcs out from your holy symbol and strikes Reese right in the center of his chest. It's so powerful it branches out and hits some of the bone alligators in the moat below, which are instantly blown to dust by your holy power. Reese, however, looks down at himself and says, Ooh, that's some incredible power you've got there. But did you know giants are the only race immune to holy magic when we die? Oh, that's bullshit right there. That's just uh... bullshit. I suppose that's why they put me out here at the front, eh? But if you're that eager to join the team, I won't stand in your way any longer. Everybody roll initiative for me. Proceeding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.